Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Pinedons playthrough. It's, uh, oh boy, this research, man, takes a long time to get through it. Finally, 72%. I mean, I don't have any projects lined up right now. I, uh, it's been kind of a, it's been tough, but I want to go through the research and have it documented in the, in the, uh, series, even though... Uh, I'm not doing anything new right now, but I, I kind of want to, I'm trying to think of what I could do. It's tough because I don't, there's, I don't want to do anything until like, okay, all the research is done. Now let's, you know, get into it, you know, get into the new stuff. But, um, a little, I'll do a base review, but you can see the grid is coming along. I'll get into some stuff that I've kind of changed. And so let's, let's queue up some stuff. Now, the TURDs, the technology things, I, I, I'm not probably not going to run these on screen, I think, but we'll go through the codex, you know, all these here. So, I, I don't know. There is a lot to go through here. It's pretty intense. Uh, so, I don't know. Maybe some of the stuff that... You know, when I, I don't know, I'll think about it, but let's, let's just get through the, some, re, let's get some research queued up because what, oh, uh, the reason for that, the reason I want to keep the research going is because what I'm rip, like I said in a couple episodes ago, or last episode is I got to keep the base running in order to make sure everything is working because then I can find issues before, you know, while I'm doing all this. So this, uh, research run here with the Pi Science 2 is more of a, a test bed. Look at that. 10 hours. I did a few things. There's the 50 hours. I had a little glitch here. And the reason for that is because I redid the rail for the labs and I kind of screwed up. I I should have I should have approached it differently, but I'm like, oh, whoops. Oh, I cut power. I, I accidentally cut power and it it cut the <laughs> it cut the labs off. So I had this I have this little glitch right here, which is, you know, it's okay. It's just funny that I'm like, oh, I just cut power. <laughs> and I tried to have a nice smooth line. But this is how long we've been running research. Look at this. I mean, this is 250 hours. 1,000 hours way back here. I don't even know when the... When did we start? Oh. Oh, that's all. 1,000 hours. Um, my, uh, I kind of spoke about the... Um, somebody asked how many hours I have in the save. Well... I'm not really going for a crazy amount of science packs per minute because I don't have, you know, a, a super computer. I have a decent computer, but I'm trying to keep the map kind of small so that I don't have uh, issues with uh, FPS, UPS issues. The autosave is getting longer each day, though. Let's queue up some stuff here. Ooh, we got, oh, we got this uh, wind power now. This is the MK2 stuff. Um, so we've got wind power stage two. I don't see any power ratings. I was kind of looking at this. Uh, I was kind of bored and looking it over. But we're looking at an excellent antimony alloy, rayon, and aluminum plate for a blade. And then we got the rotor. Uh, it's using that same excellent antimony alloy. Blade MK2, rayon, bolts, rubber, al aluminum plate. This is kind of interesting. We got iron niobium alloy, which is not a big deal. But the EVA's in here. Yao Drive MK01. That's odd. MK02 shaft, engineer rayon, rubber, advanced small parts, stainless steel, and heavy oil now. So we got to gotta get some heavy oil for the crankcase, I guess. Kevlar and sand casting to make a wind vane. That is very interesting. Uh, then we've got a tower. Oh, yeah, we got... Oh, okay, the tower itself. Uh, and there's all the stuff... Tower MK01, Tower MK02. Okay, that's the you know the thing that goes up in the air. Stainless steel solder. Uh, then we've got the nacelle, self-assembly. Uh, the SAM, S A M M. We got MK02 brakes, control panel, gearbox shaft, utility box, Yao Drive MK02. Oh boy, electric engine unit, advanced small parts, of stainless steel. Then we have the actual hout. That's the horizontal. And we got electronics MK02 animator MK02. Then we got the nacelle, rotor, tower, and wind vane, all MK02. 
and it says 25 average uh, megawatts, 50% uh, variance. And this is the Vout, the vertical, green wire, uh, Eva, Sam, uh, MKO2 animator, control panel electronics, gearbox, shaft, utility box, got an electric engine unit, complex circuit board, rubber, advanced solid parts, stainless steel, and finally, we've got the wind vane MKO2, Kevlar sand casting, and hot air. Very interesting. All right, we'll cue that up. And then we've got, oh, the Navens, or Yadels. Yadels, and uh, this is the a new recipe. This is stage two, wood fungal substrate plus special, because why not, right? Throw everything in there. Yadel spores, fertilizer, water. We get six yields. I don't know what we were getting before. And then we got the MK02 spin up here. Um, now, Yadels are, we just generate them. So this should be fairly simple to do. Uh, wood, special fungal, substrate, Yadel spores, two Yadels. 1,000 water, and we get a half percent. You know, it's that half percent thing again. I, I'm almost tempted to go to the Yadels build and just spin it up there. And then when we get the MK02, then we bring it to the lab. We'll have to see here, though. What's this now? Yeah, so the spores, once we get the MK02 spores, oh, we get nitrogen for this, too. Uh, we have to put it in there. And then we get the two. So it's 10 to 2, and a 25% chance to get a third. Now, it's 1 to 5 MKO2. So, what do we got? We get, once we get that first one here, we put it in here, we get 5, but we need 2 MKO2s, and then we get, then we get the, yeah, it's a, then it's a self-sustaining with an increase of that 25%. So, you just walk away. Oh, cobalt fluoride. Ooh. Oh, wow, we have to throw that in there, too. I'm going to research that. Oh, and then we got a stack inserter. Ooh. Non-stack ins... Oh. Oh, we get this now. Oh, thankfully. Oh, my God, that's awesome. Ooh, this is going to help out so much. The mini loader goes up by one. I didn't realize that. Huh. Now, mini loaders are kind of a weird animal where the input is kind of like having the output is different than the input. The input will suck anything in there so fast, but the output is kind of like a, you know, an inserter out. Well, this is going to help out a lot. Oh, baby. 3,300. Oh, dear. Oh, that's going to take a while. <laughs> All right, so we got non-stack inserter capacity bonus and a stack inserter. Oh, that's going to be awesome. What's this? Oh, another, uh, this is the... Uh, oil power plant, which is not oil. It's kerosene from uh, what I remember. Molten salt at 500 gives us the 2,000, or uh, 500 hot molten salt at 2,000 degrees now. There we go. And then this is the new machine. Uh, Eva, Sam, engine, complex circuit, van small parts, plastic, all that good stuff. 50 stainless steel. Now, we're getting close to the end. Ooh. I think we are at the end. Interesting. All right, well, let's knock this one out. This is, um, that's, now these are pretty nasty. 32nd craft, 450 science packs total for that research to get complete. And so that's fast. That's going to chew up science quick, but we have to do it. Now, what are we getting here? This is, uh, oh, copper edition. Okay, this is the, I'm just going to go down the line here. We'll fill this up, the queue here. Uh, there might be more research that I don't see here, but we'll have, to, I want to clear some out so we have a good viewpoint here. Okay, uh, so we've got, um, moon drops have several copper containing enzymes that play an important role in photosynthesis. Respiration and the formation of lingon. This process requires soil rich in copper and is what gives them their distinct bluish color. Oh, okay. Uh, novice soil naturally has trace amounts of copper. However, the addition of raw copper or into their fertilization routine will improve the crop yield. Okay. 
And then we got Moonlight. I think we read a little bit of this. Now that I remember. Moondrops got their name because their flowers only open under the light from one of Novice's Moons. Install special high-powered lamps into the greenhouse and improve production by constantly simulating Novice Moonlight. Okay. Now, uh, we'll read... Remember that we have to choose one of these. We only got, I think we only get to choose one of these technology upgrades. Install, okay, this is carbon capture. Oh, anyway, so they're headed by, uh, that's Copper Edition, Moonlight, and Carbon Capture. Okay, this is the one I would like to have, I think, for carbon dioxide. Uh, install small filters that will absorb escaping CO2 from the greenhouse. Helping Moondrops in their carbon capture allows self-sufficient production of CO2 without external inputs. Okay, I don't know if that means we cannot we don't have to supply carbon dioxide to them. So that's kind of cool. So we started that research. Um, ooh, fastwood forestry upgrade. Ooh, dry storage. Allow logs to rest several days in the sun to remove excess moisture and improve fiber quality by weight. Oh, I wonder what that does uh, as far as a recipe. Uh, selective cutting heads. Remove branches and excess bark during the cutting as preparation for further processing, the second stage of wood processing becomes much faster. And then internal burner. Use sticks, wood chips, and leaves to fuel an internal burner. The burner will generate part of the electricity consumed by the building. You can also create ashes as a byproduct. Oh, wow. Okay. That's kind of interesting. All right. We'll cue that up. <laughs> All right. Let's go over the base real quick. And then what I'll do is I'll cut... Um, I'll cut in, I'll try to get a project up and running, but if anything, I'm just going to run research and I'll be doing base reviews as I go. Last time I, I still have this area yet to do here. I'm going to get to it and I'm going to have to soon. <laughs> um, my sulfuric acid is kind of getting hammered here and there's a uh, problem where I'm, I st stopped doing something and I got to start doing it again. Uh, we'll get into that. I went ahead and joined this rail here and this is uh, a big area here it's gonna be this is, oh it's basically a two a two block two city block 11 by 22 um i had to reroute some power um oh gosh oh, okay that's doing fine i had to reposition the the uh sin gas or no coal gas and I got a one way in uh, from one direction here, which is fine because um, these can shoot down this way or this way. They don't need to go. They don't need to go north as much where they could just go. Th uh, and everything that's coal gas related is over in this side of the base anyway. Um, so, yeah, they could just shoot out and go this way um, or south. Well, basically this way. I had to reposition this rail here because the uh, grid... Uh, was higher up here. It used to be down here, and it had to pull up. And you'll notice that, uh, oh, I have this anthracene oil, or naphthalene oil. I gotta tie that in still. But I had to move, I had to reposition these to here, because it used to be over here. So I remember I, remember I cut in over here and going up. So all that's done, and then I, um, there's a, a yard I had down here temporarily. I got rid of it, and I repositioned it somewhere else i don't know where i cannot remember where <laughs> just look for a yard you'll see it now what i did oh here is the shale oil i moved it and i had to kind of slap in a uh eight i got this is not an eight lane uh eight train yard it's actually uh two four six eight uh nine ten eleven twelve it's a 12 yard one way in uh, yard so it can hold 12 trains and that's exactly what I have I doubt I'll have 12 trains in there but you got to be ready for it and I repositioned this yard here uh, so shale oil used to be up here somewhere in fact I think it's where the algae is now I moved the Ulrichs here and then I just kind of routed some I just these are the salt the salt mine and this is a uh, uh, what do you call it raw gas so I'm going to reposition these. Uh, this one's okay, but this one here, I'm going to 
I, I'm gonna probably go up this up here. So I'll have to re re redo this whole rail thing. Uh, it's not important right now. And over, let's see. Oh, and what I did to s I solved the petri dish problem. I have to come over here. I I'm gonna t knock this down to one. But right now it's it's fine the way it is, you know. Uh, but yeah, I only need one of these inputs here. And I put a Petri dish one here. It's a brand new one, and I only have one. And that solved my problem with Pi Science 2, or 1, Pi Science 1. And here is the, I moved the moss. Moss is down here now. So they are um, kind of, they're together. And I did a little, I did a little bypass here because I have the stone and carbon dioxide coming in and um, it can be as many as two stone trains. So chance, sometimes what happens is the carbon dioxide will, will be here waiting here while the stone is unloading. So I did a little bypass so the trains can get over here. So now moss is consolidated in one block, city block, which is nice. And here is, oh, the, um, I have a tailings project here and what I'm doing is I'm bringing in the tailings I'm venting them at I'm keeping this at 50,000 with a control pump the reason I'm using a pump with a red wire is because it if I used a 80% valve the train would have to has to come in and then that valve is really slow so the train will unload very quick with these two pumps and then it sits here for a little bit and I want the train unloaded and out of here as quickly as possible and this pump will evacuate the tailings quick to the um, pie hole pie sinkhole now the problem I'm having here is I'm not vent I'm not burning these um, things here the tailings and I'm I don't know how I'm gonna do it here I might have to take the tailings. I, I think I might have to have a bleed off, you know, with a red wire and then bring it up to the uh, thing here, this here. Because I'm not burning the tailings. I'm not bringing them up here anymore. Uh, I have the, you know, thing set. But the problem is now my sulfuric acid is suffering because that little bit of sulfuric uh, or acid gas that I was getting from that was kind of helping keep the system going. Uh, the other issue here is that... Wow, what's going on? I think the ash is... Wow, it's getting hammered. Yeah, the only thing... The only problem is that my ash production is really low here. And the other... So, few, so uh, the flu gas is kind of low. Now I have flue gas coming from here. And what I have to do is take this out. And then I have to train this up as well to get it over to the the acid gas production area, which is over here. And as you can see, yeah, it's 25,000 now. So I might, I might have a problem. I just moved that uh, a while ago, a little while ago, eh, you know, within the last maybe eight, ten, 10 hours or so. So, yeah. Yeah, this is a problem. And this thing just can't keep up. I could try to beef this up, but it's so... It's a crap build. I was trying to... I was just learning it, you know. Anyway, so, yeah. The last thing I gotta do here... Is it... Uh, the last part of the base, the rail redo... Is this quadrant here. And, uh... It's, come, it's gonna come along. I gotta be selective... I've got a few sp I don't want to go over here yet because um, the biology stuff is all right here. And I kind of want to keep it together for troubleshooting. Look at all these trains going through here. Oh, God. <laughs> that's, that's really what inspired this whole project. Remember, way back, I was having issues with train traffic. Well, not so much anymore because I've dispersed it out and and now the trains have more options to drive around. So they're not getting all bottlenecked over here now, which is really good. They, I do get bottlenecks around the yards a little bit, but, you know, that's kind of to be expected. I might have to rethink the yard thing and just go with an eight-lane yard uh, or an eight-train yard per block. 
and maybe do a, like a corner like this, you know, instead of trying to jam them into this one little spot here. I might have to do a, um, I might have to design a four lane rail system because this is one way in, one way out. So if I do a four laner, uh, I can use these here. And this is a one way in, one way out. Uh, this thing, the, there's this one and that one. I don't know why it's that way. That's just the way they copied it or did it. So I can use this one. It's a four lane, but. You know, it's two in, two, uh, two in from both directions or two out from both directions, you know, the on the four laner. And I, I'm using it here, actually, on both ends. So I'd have to, um, you know, use this, uh, do a, an eight lane yard uh, or eight train yard and have just an input uh, only. Um, yeah, because and this is so this is the input. This is the output. Uh, and I'd have to probably, I could back this up, get rid of this thing here, and then just, uh, let's see. No, I like this. I like this. Uh, maybe I could go here and here for having two inputs and then have an output here and maybe off the other side too. And, you know, that's if train traffic is really crazy, but so far it's not been too bad, you know. Uh, one of the things I got to do is get rid of the uh, battery build. That, this is a long time coming, too. Um, I'm going to take the antimony, lead antimony uh, stuff here, and I'm going to do a separate build on that. I have cyanic acid and ammonia already on the network, so that can come out. It might tax the what I have, but we can always build more. Because this has its own manure build, you know, and its own flower build and all that stuff. So we'll have to see how that goes. Ugh, yeah. This has got to go. <laughs> I've been wanting to get rid of that so bad. Let's. I'm gonna delete that. Heck with that thing. Okay. All right. I'm gonna let this run. I'm gonna keep ripping, and I'm gonna try and come up with a project. If anything, um, I'd like to come in here, and we are working on. I wonder how it'll show up if it pops up. Needs research. Yeah. Open tech tree. Okay. Uh, I'd like to come in here and pick something. If anything, I think the moon drops would help us out a lot. It'd be nice if this sorted to the top, you know, or it highlights it so you know which ones you've unlocked and, you know, easily kind of look through. But we'll have to see. I'm curious. Okay, I'm going to cut it here and I'll be right back. I'm going to be ripping up more stuff. Yeah, maybe I'll cut in and we'll do, you know, we'll queue up. I'm going to let this all run out because I think we're done with all the research that we've had to do. And I think I'm just going to knock out these off screen and then we'll go over them in one episode. All right. I'll be right back. Okay. Hours, days have gone by <laughs> since that last cut there. Um, I had to chop the research off and I still have, I did the two technology upgrades that we did queue up in the prior cut. But I was, I had to stop this one and I think this one. There might be another one. I can't recall. But I have one, two, three. Yeah, there's three left. And then it's all the, the, the turdy ones. <laughs> and, oh, uh, and I, I'll tell you why I had to cut that off. In the codex... We have the ability to visible researched. So, oh, I did this one in, in the Vrauks. Oh, I did an extra. Now, this is really nice. Selected, unselected, which is the same as right now, researched. So we can filter the list, and I love it. So here is the Fastwood Forestry. Oh, that's so cool. I got a little sun beating down the logs there oh look Ooh. oh wood to fiber this i thought i saw this somewhere Ooh. wood to raw fiber and then we've got a wood to raw fiber with biomass now and then now we have oh and this centrifuge okay oh i remember that now 
Oh, wait, we used this prior. We used this when before we got the Kykelks. But what's this one now? 10 to 5 with biomass. 10 to 6 with biomass. So what's the difference? What? Oh, this is the old one. This is the new one. That's what that arrow means. Okay. So it was 10 wood to 2 raw fiber. That was a really bad one. Now it's 10 to 4. So it's doubling it with the biomass output, which is CO2, uh, basically. And this is the old one that we're using for microfiber, the uh, uh, that filter. So we have 10 to 5 with 6 biomass. 10 to 6 with 6 biomass. Okay, so we get an extra one. That's cool. All right, nice. Now what's this? Four logs to 20 wood in a wood processor. And this is four logs. Wait a minute. Is it faster? One second. Wow. Oh my God. That's insane. That's insane. Oh, look at the, uh, it's chopping the, all the excess off with this thing, this icon here. Oh, that's so cool. All right. This one I'm interested in because I read it and I didn't really, I didn't comprehend it until I was doing the editing on the first part already. Now we have this one. Oh, okay. What? This is a new one. Wait a minute. Is this a new building? What is this? Real speed, 8% plus. Energy, energy consumption down, 30. Speed plus 168. Huh. Internal burner. Yeah. Uh, all right. What? It adds a part. Is it steel? Not steel. Oh, it adds uh, the stone furnace. Okay, there you go. Now, here's an, a recipe. Ash seedling water. Ash seedling water. Six logs, six logs. A re oh. I'm sorry. I had something pop up on me here. Okay, it's eliminating a lot of ash. So it's 30 to 10. Same amount of water and saplings, same time. So it's an ash eliminator. Uh, okay, and then this one is the same. Ash reduction. Okay, so we have ash 10... But we're adding, oh, the muddy sludge is there. 10, 350. Okay, 15 seconds. Oh, wow. So it reduces the amount of ash that it's producing or requiring, which is good because if we do, you know, go to different power sources that don't burn coal products, you know, carbon-based products, I guess, then this is really good for later on. We're at that point where we're going to start to maybe look into the new stuff. We got a lot to do. but Anyway, so I thought that was really cool. That's view all. And you can always click on this here, you know. But I like this researched and selected. I love it. Okay, so that's good. All right. We got a new project. We got a project here. I'm gonna do a speed up video on it. But look at the base now, boys and girls. <laughs> I went ahead. I had to build out up here. I have the cotton guts in these two quadrants here, or er, blocks. Uh, oh, and the reason I had to cut the research off was for some. Oh, I what else it takes is one thing to take make to take the base out in and put it into tailspin mode where you can't recover i had moved the tin thing here the the tin ore mining area and i didn't realize that the underground wasn't connected i was like are you kidding me and i found it out because science stopped running and i'm like why is oh no what happened oh it's oh it's this you know you have to trace it up track it all the way back to what's broken so what happened was the phytoplankton ran out on me i doubled this to try and recover quicker 
what ended up happening was the Pi Science 2 completely ran out. Well, for some reason, I couldn't recover from that. And the other thing that I did was, oh, uh, where are you? Uh, the Yadels or these things, whatever these things are called. Yeah, the Yadels. I had moved this build. And the flavonoids, for some reason, uh, the the seaweed requirement for this is so high, but we're consuming so little of the flavonoids that it doesn't make a big impact. But what happened was I, I spun this up empty and the flavor, I don't know why this is still here. I was messing around. The flavonoids, uh, the 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 Yadels used to be over here, and I just moved it, and then I waited until this was depleted, uh, the original build, you know, the old build, and then I spun this one up. Well, my seaweed just crapped the bed, and I couldn't recover. I don't know what was going on. And the other thing I did was I had belt priorities here. Uh... And for some reason, I just couldn't get enough seaweed. The whole base was just completely spun out. Couldn't recover. I even, I, I noticed that these inserters weren't working as much. Uh, so I did a split. You know, I, I, well, I did it underground here. And I got two belts. Now, it's not two full belts. It's just one, a little bit of one and another full somewhat. I could even take this one here. And underground it, or these two here. I could go up higher, but it's fine. I was watching it. And, yeah, so I, I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, I just couldn't get enough seaweed to run the base anymore. But I had never, I've had i never had a problem until the Yadels rebuild or move. Now, notice saline water is right here now next to the seaweed. And what I have to do is prioritize I think I'm gonna have to do some kind of priority pump off of here or you know do some circuit network and not allow this pump to work unless there is enough in this tank to um, get keep this running it, it seemed like it was doing okay but I'm, I was a little worried that maybe that was causing a problem because the trains had run and maybe there was um, the saline water was out, and it might have spun out my uh, seaweed as well. I don't know, but I ha I'm going to keep an eye. That's why I shut the, the base off. I said, all right, let me just kill the research, and then I'll spin it back up and test it when I get... I'm just going to get everything done. Now, you can see that uh, I am down further into this area here. The animal parts are moved down here. And I no longer, I have to put some radars in, but uh, I no longer have that quagmire uh, area where I was going all the way down to get carbon dioxide. They have their own inputs and outputs here. So here's our carbon dioxide. It's all nice and full. I move the power over here and everything is good to go. I, I would like to not have this here and have more carbon dioxide stuff you know, because I, I feel like I'm throwing carbon dioxide away by throwing into this power. Because this isn't a really a good power system. I had to shave these patches down. <laughs> anyway. Oh, I got to signal this up here, I guess. Or did I do it? Looks like I did it. Yeah, I can delete that now. Good. Okay. Now, I uh, I, I was lucky. I Oh, I moved the fish builds. These are a pain to move. A lot of stuff on belts, you know. It's just, it's brainless work, really. I I find it fun though. Uh, salt mine, I re had to reconfigure it really tight. I figured, you know, I wanted to get it in this area, but I have um, a one way in here and a one way out, you know, obviously because it's not going over here. And the trains will come in, load, and then dock over here. So that's all good. Uh, so it's a salt mine there. And a uh, nice little design. I kind of like this design. Um, I was able to 
avoid moving the, um, oh yeah, the Petri dishes right here, Petri dishes. I, I just rerouted the rail. I tightened this up here. It's only one lane now. So I cut this down to one train stop and I was, I did a T here and tied in here. So it worked out really well. I didn't have to move this at all. I didn't have to move the, um, the bones. Yeah. We're getting the bones from the, uh, from these guys here, our, our, uh, augs. So the aug build is, was, was not needed to move. I was so happy. Oh, and this bad boy here, this is our phosphate, uh, phosphine gas, phosphoric acid. That's for our, uh, aluminum. And I totally forgot that I am capturing the crushed, uh, phosphoric rock, phosphoric rock, phosphoric. Uh, I forgot I was capturing that and, uh, I just had to move. Oh, I have to, oh, I have to write a note here. Um increase uh threshold or amount yeah, i'll know what that means uh i'll put that right here i have it set to 200 or 152 so and this thing chews through these uh phosphate rocks like nothing so i have to increase that out the run over there i got the sin gas here i didn't real i forgot i needed it uh well i didn't really forget i just I forgot when I got here, and I, oh crap, I have to cut in a lane uh, for that. So I just had to jostle things around a little bit because we need the syngas for this process here, the phosphoric acid, and that is processing the, it's ash sand. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, and then the other crushed stuff there, yeah. There it comes in there. And then I trained it up as well. And then we have the hydrofluoric acid, which I we haven't had to use yet, but it's there. And this, I, I forgot about this crap. I was like, oh my gosh, I, I forgot I had this here. Well, I, I do, in the back of my mind, I knew this was here, but I totally forgot about this stuff. So I moved this and the original mining op is here. So I cleaned that up. It's all nice. Remember, you know, I do things just to get by, uh, you know, get through certain things, and then I'll spin. I usually spin back around and I'll fix it up. But I'm kind of like I get impatient. I want to get things up and running, and and I'll kind of go shoot from the hip. And you know, I regret it sometimes, but I I find it fun to, you know, redo things and uh, with a different mindset. So yeah, you know, that's part of the process that I go through. I still have to, I have to move the Ulrichs. I have to move the these two builds here, the zipper eggs and the this stuff here, the uh, arthropod blood. So we have to I have to move these, and this monster has to move too. Oh no, I'm sorry. This is a hot air build. This is the uh, liquid manure, but I'm using that for the depolymerized organics, and we have the manure bacteria so i have to move this on all this this i think i can fit in a block i'll have to reposition maybe some stuff i don't know i might have to rework it a little bit i don't know we'll see so it, it's coming down oh niobium plate is next and chromium is now on ltn this mines so slow and if you mouse over this it says um metallic slightly metallic black rocks pretty cool stuff so now i have an ltn stop here for the chromium i wanted to keep this here might as well it's a small little area you know not really difficult we don't need a lot of chromium but i do need to get the ni nichrome online because we're gonna need nichrome for bots and stuff you know and uh other things and what else have i done oh this is the uh coal-based power let me turn on these uh, Carbon-based fuel yard, and I move that here and get this. I still have to tie this in, connect rail, but I decided to uh, mine the back of this, and this is going to reduce a massive amount of train traffic. Just doing this alone here. Uh, so I, yeah, I want to do that, and and it's tapping off of this 
patch here. And I think that, you know what's funny? Look at this. I am right here. <laughs> ah, I could belt this. I could probably pull some belts out of this thing and beef this up or, or put more more miners onto this. And I could belt it right to here and here. And that would eliminate a lot of train traffic. So I think I'm going to do that. Now, at least I didn't even notice I, you know, because I get into this mode of, you know, move, move, move. And, oh, and I wanted to showcase this too. All time uh, production. And look at this. The amount of raw coal. So we have the raw coal is the highest hitter. Then we have ash. And then we have coal, which is from our raw coal, basically. And then stone and kerrigan. Soil, coke, gravel, iron, native flora. And look at this. Salt is, is actually... Um, coming up in the in the ranks here which is insane but this gives you a snapshot or an idea of how much that we're we're, we're chewing up utility box yikes look at this gold plate is up in over here that's kind of like the middle of the road but okay then we got wood and sand quartz moss copper stone brick seaweed pure sand Tin. Now, this is due to all the rail that I'm placing. Iron plate, biomass, and then here's processed iron. Coal dust. Coarse coal because we're running that off of our trains. Urea, Relasia, limestone, copper wire. Uh, and now in vanilla, this is usually number one. Um, the Relasia's copper plate. I mean, you know, this kind of goes hand in hand here. Iron sticks. Wow. I think that's from the zinc, you know, uh, the ball mill. And then we got uh, raw borax and borax should be equal. Kind of, sort of, because uh, sometimes, you know, you delete stuff. Like a uh, case that might get shot or something. I'm trying to move stuff around. Calcium carbide. So this gives you an idea of what the heavy hitters are in this mod. That's not too bad. 5,600. Now that's our mechanical part of one. But yeah, you could, you know, coal is pretty much the heavy hitter. And ash, coal, ash, raw coal, ash, coal, stone kerrigan, soil. And that's pretty interesting. So I thought I'd showcase that. All right. We're going to do a speed up video on this here. And, uh, and then I'll probably end the episode. We're going to do the chromium here. And I already pulled everything over here. I don't think I need coke let's go over hell mod um chromium so I'm going for five a second very interesting I need five casting units two and a half I had to delete everything out of here except for this and what that did is I had to reestablish this because it's using the chromite grade four. So I had to reestablish this recipe. I had to re-click on the chromite sand to get a new recipe from the solid separator because I had an old one here. And then I was able to pop in, uh, it's, it's using the hydroclone, hydrocyclone. And we're spinning, I guess, the chromite grade three with water and we're getting rejects and the chromite grade four. And then I just went along and found out because I was trying to find out how many miners I needed, you know, and all that to run this process. I might have to beef up more miners just because of travel time and stuff with trains and all that. But this is not this is more for our building and I need to move it. The next thing I'm going to move is the um, niobium, niobium. And I, I'm going to I might tap a different patch for the niobium because I don't want to be in that area. I want to kind of capitalize on that area. So I'll have to find a niobium that's a quartz. It's kind of hard to find them because they are they're the same color as a lot of other, you know, the other stuff like iron. It looks kind of close. 
So I'll have to find that. And it's in the middle of a block. I could just mine it and then put something in on this side here and then leave the patch there. But, you know, I'll have to figure that out. And I got to re hell mod this, that Niobium. So let's get to work on this and we'll cut it off. And what I'm going to do is move all this remaining stuff and then we'll, I'll kick the research on to test it. And then we'll hopefully next episode get on some new stuff. All right, let's go.
Okie doke, we have an official Chromium build. Yay! Finally, this has been a long time coming, but you know, this isn't a production thing. It's, you know, we need the Chromium for building the inserters and stuff, and that's really why I, I just bootstrapped it. But it's good to have it finally in a, uh, you know, production form. Um, the I have the Combinator set for two trains at 2,000 and 1,000. So it should, you know, deploy one train is needed or two trains is needed. Uh, that's what's good about LTN is, you know, you, you do have the two train. Uh, and, you know what? This train limit is on anything, which is great. I love that about LTN. Uh, so there's really not much different here. We get gravel and stone out of this process. And then we get the rejects and, you know, we process those. And a lot of, you know, zipping back and forth. You know, a couple things going backwards to be reprocessed. I have a priority belt here. And a prior or splitter and another priority splitter here so that the back end does the front end doesn't get backed up or back end, I guess. And then the unique thing about the chromium is the chromium sand, chromite sand. And then we need limestone. And uh, what's great about the limestone <laughs> is I have that on the network. Kaboom. And a lot of it, so, you know, when we build, this will eventually go down. The only concern I have is if this run, you know, like, let's say I'm building and not, you know, researching or, or whatnot. I, I, I don't know. There's so many layers to where this line, the limestone comes primarily from the coarse faction processing for the Corlex milk. And that is in research only. So I will have, to, I might have to speaker this up, but you know, when, when I find out I'm not getting something, well, I'll figure it out <laughs> eventually, you know? Uh, so that is a, a unique little thing there. Uh, we need carbon dioxide, which it didn't change. So there we go. And, oh, I put the chromium that I had in the case back in here from the original build. And I think I have 2000 in here. So yeah, you know what? I really don't need this much chromium. And I'm going to send this back. I had a problem. Uh, the TSM keeps messing messing up. Oh, I don't have one of these. And I'll just go ahead and do that, that, and uh, that. There we go. That's fine. Yeah, LT, um, TSM, I, I had the same problem down here at the new body parts or necromancy. I, I forgot I called this necromancy. Uh, these trains won't didn't deploy. So when I move something, I always send them to the stop here. And they come here and then they go back into the new yard, you know, so send them to the new stop, which is the same stop, basically just moved. And then they come back and rest in the yard here. Well, for some reason, TSM doesn't deploy them. So I had to come over here and send them all back to the stop here again. And then they all deployed at once. So I had a lot of body parts that were coming out of here. Uh, this is back up to 44,000. I don't remember what it was before. Uh, but all this stuff here, uh, the blood... I think I sent the, I, I drove the trains back and forth to get the blood in here, uh, the liquids, and then uh, I repurposed the biomass a little bit. I had like a lot of biomass in there, like 22,000, but now it's way up to 45. This stuff I just kind of brought back over here, you know, uh, trying to save time and steps and stuff. But anyway, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to carry on with this project here i gotta get this out of here too this will free up a nice spot i th i can go i could deploy from here or uh, enter from here and maybe uh from here as well so i could i have options with this uh region here i have options with this region but yeah i gotta work on this i can't for keep forgetting about it 
But Niobe and Plate, uh, I did off screen put it together. So I might, this, it's not any different than what we've done. So I'll do this off screen, but it's going to have a nitrogen build internally like we're doing now. And I'm also, I'm going to bring Syngas in and activate a carbon. I don't know if I want to do this off site and bring it in because we're going to need the Syngas, uh, the refined Syngas for other things. But uh, I don't know. I think I'm just going to do the activated carbon like I'm doing now. Uh, the mining op. Oh, that's for the mining op. Oh, never mind. Yeah, this here is going to stay at the mining op. Yeah, I don't have to bring that in. Good. Okay. And I'm going to bring the ore in to the build. And I re... Oh, I refactored it, factored it to five plate a second. So 300 a minute. That's a pretty decent amount. Uh, and for some reason, I put the hyd the the purest nitrogen up here. I don't know why I popped it up there. But everything seems to be working out. And we only need, us, you know, just over five DDCs and uh, a little over one chemical plant. Yeah, we'll, we'll follow the recipe, you know, the best we can. So... I'm going to do that off-site, though, because it's not anything different than what we've done. And then hopefully next episode, we'll get on cracking on some new stuff, and you'll see the grid. The Pyanodon's grid. All right. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And I hope you enjoyed. Peace out.